All right, so um, I'm going to create two videos um, that you need to watch back to back. Um, one is going to be binary to decimal conversion. The other one will be decimal to binary conversion. So um, it's really important to be able to do um, binary to decimal conversion and back, uh, especially if you're going to take the certification tests. Um, they're going to need you to be able to look at some binary numbers and convert them to decimal or, or the opposite. So this skill is really important. It's not very hard, so it just takes some practice. Um, and it does, it's a very basic skill, so don't just blow it off. Make sure you can really do this skill and have it in your back pocket ready to go. Uh, that way you don't have to spend a lot of time during, uh, either during the certification test or even in the work environment trying to convert these numbers. Um, you don't want to be learning this during the test. So another practice and a few little tricks to it. So uh, let's get started. So there's going to be two videos. Again, watch them back to back, please. And, uh, and uh, cool. So we're going to start with binary to decimal conversion. Okay. So um, what we're going to start with is talking about uh, decimal place settings. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to tie in some existing knowledge with something you really know very well, and that's obviously decimal. You've been doing it all your lives since first grade. So um, the decimal numbering system, of course, has um, 10 symbols, right? 10 symbols, 0 through 9. And all our numbers are created with these symbols. Um, like I know you're saying, Johnny, I know this, right? So no big deal. So if we look at um, decimal, these are called place settings. And if we write the, and it's, of course, it's a power of 10 um, numbering system, right? So everything's in the powers of 10, right? Um, so, um, so this would be the 10 to the 0 power, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3. And of course, it goes on forever, right? It never stops. Um, these are just four place settings I've written here. And uh, what they represent is whenever you write a symbol underneath the place setting, like for instance, if I just write the number 9 here, we know that's just the in the ones place that represents nine, right? But if I move that nine over one to the next place setting, we know that that's 90, right? And there's no ones, right? So nine, nine tens, right? Nine times 10 is 90 and no ones, right? So again, you've been doing this your whole life, so it kind of makes it like you're just saying like, that's too easy, Johnny. But um, just understand that whatever I put in the place setting represents the number of that place setting. So let's do one real quick. So let's just, I just randomly pick this number out of my head, right? So what this represents is 2 times 100 is 200, 4 times 10 is 40, 9 times 1 is 9. You add all those together and you get 249, right? And that's the way it works. And again, you've been doing this your whole lives. So this, you know, this is really simple, but you, and you do it in your head so quickly that you don't even think about it. But again, whatever is underneath that place setting represents how many of that place setting exists. So I'll do one more. And again, I don't want to insult your intelligence too much more, but uh, let's just do that, right, and that. So what this represents is five times a thousand, so you get five thousand, right? It's five thousands, seven hundreds, no tens, right, and nine ones, right? So you add that together and you get five thousand seven hundred and nine, right? This is important, right? The absence of a place setting is also just as important as a number being there. You can't just leave it blank. Right? You can't just go five, seven, nine. There has to be something saying that there isn't any of that place setting. So being able to understand that is really important. And one more thing I want to point out with uh, still staying in decimal is that, um, let's say I write this number, 999, nine, nine, right? So nine is the last number in this numbering system, right? So we know that if I add one more to this, if I add one more number to this, right? It jumps over to the next place then. So one more than 999 is obviously a thousand, right? So I just want to point this out because in, in a few minutes I'm going to go over binary. And whenever we see long strings of ones, it's always going to be easy to understand what that number is. And like y'all, like I just did, the next number, if I add one more to 999, it's 1000, right? So all of this, if I rewrite this out a little clearer, right? Real quick, right? So I add, if, I have an, if I'm at 999 and I add one more, it becomes 1,000. So all these other place settings become zeros, right? We start over. So 1,001, 1,002. So in other words, it jumps over to the next place setting. And uh, so that's important. So that's enough about decimal. I know you're saying, Johnny, you're insulting my intelligence. And that's, that's cool. So let's move on now to binary. So the binary numbering system, again, we have only two symbols, right? We have a zero and a one. A zero is an off, a one is an on. So right? computers only talk on in offs and ons. If you want to talk about voltage, 
This would be zero volts, and this would be like five volts, right? So that's what a computer talks in, zeros and ones, ons and offs, right? So it's important to be able to understand the language of the computer, right? So just like with with decimal, we have place settings, right? And all we start with the 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 ones place. So two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, two to the five, two to the six, and two to the seven. I'm gonna stop there. Of course, it goes on forever, right? It goes on infinity. But we're going to stop here because this is 8 bits, right? 8 bits. 8 bits is the same as 1 byte, right? So I always like to point that out. And so that's why I stopped there because um, a byte in computers is a really important number, a byte. Uh, anyway, so, so again, so if you notice with the binary system, it's just doubling, right? So... Two, one plus one is two, two, you know, and no big deal. So double two, you get four, right? So four plus four is eight, eight plus eight is 16, right? So all I'm doing is doubling. 16 plus 16 is 32, 32 plus 32 is 64. So we're just doubling our, our place settings to get to the next place setting, right? Of course, what would be the next place setting after 128? 128 plus 128 would be um, 256, and that would be the next place setting. But we're stopping here at this place setting because that is a byte, right? So really important to remember that. So let's take a look at this. Um, if I were to take and draw all zeros, right? The starting place being all zeros, right? Of course, that's equals to zero. But if I were to fill these up with all ones, right? What I would do is I would add all the place settings up. So if you were to add 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1, add all that together, you would get 255. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is 255. Because the next place setting, like I just said, if you double 128, would be 256, right? So this is one less than this, right? So I just want to point that out. So make sure you understand that. And of course, it keeps on going forever, right? Doubling 256 would be 200, uh, 512. So, okay, so let's, let's start looking at how we count in binary. So again, if there's a, so I only have two symbols to play with, right? So if we start counting, starting on the right, if I put, of course, the first number is always zero, then we have one, right? So if I want the number two, I would put a one here and a zero here. That'd be a two and no ones. That would be the number. Now this will be the decimal equivalent. So on this side of the, of the, of the line, I'm doing the decimal equivalent, right? So I'll explain that again you know, more when I have a few more numbers on the board. If I want the number three, right, we have a two and a one, that equals three, right? So, so again, if I want the number four, right, I'll put a four here in this place setting, a one here, zero, zero. So a one, four, no twos, no ones, four, right? So again, if there's a one in the place setting, you would add that place setting and then keep going. So let's let's move on a little, let's go a little farther. Let's put this number on the board, right? So what would this be? Well, we have an eight. We don't have any fours. We have a two, but no ones. That'd be, right, 10, right? Sorry, oops, 10. That would be 10, right? So this is equivalent to 10. So what am I talking about here with equivalent, right? So let's say I have, I'm gonna draw 10 circles. Right? I have written or just drawn 10 circles. So I can express this quantity two ways. I can do it in decimal with the number 10, if this is decimal, right? Or I can say 1010 in binary. These are two different ways of expressing a quantity. One is 10 and the other one is 1010. So these are the same amount, the same quantity. So again, I can say, oh, look, I, I have written 1010 circles on the board, or I've written 10 circles on the board, but they are the exact same quantity, just different ways of expressing those quantities, right? Just different numbering system. So that's important to remember, right? So again, on the left, on the right side here, I'm expressing them in decimal. Okay, so let's keep on going. So I'm gonna write another quantity on, on the board here. So let's do this. Shoot, sorry, there's no four in this. Okay, so again, if there's a one there, we're gonna add it together. If there isn't a one there, we don't need it, right? So 32, four, two, and a one, right? 34, 
Now 32 plus that's 36, 37, 38, 39. So this is 39. So so that would be the equivalent of 39. So one, excuse me, it's getting kind of kind of ugly. 100111 one, zero, zero, one, one, one is the same as in that's a binary expression of decimal 39. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm showing you how to convert binary numbers to decimal numbers, right? So here we go. Let's do one more, and then we'll have some examples of how this works, right? So now I'm going to start. I'll do two more, and then we'll stop. So let's go here. We'll do this, 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 and this. Okay, so here we go. So again, if there's a 1 there, we're going we're gonna to use it. So 64, right, plus 8, right? Plus, excuse me, I don't know why I did that. Uh, plus a four, plus a one. Okay, so let's add all this together. So sixty-four. So this is kind of interesting. Um, real quick, sometimes it's easier to break up parts of it, right? So if you notice from the eight area to the ones place, the largest number I can have. If, uh, I'm, now I'm going to deviate from this one real quick. Let me draw a one here real quick. So if you add all this together, you get 15. So um, from 8 over, the largest number I can have is 15, right? So let's put that 0 back, right? So I know that the largest number over here is 15, right? So you know that 8 plus 4 is 12, right? Right, And then one more would be 13, right? So over here is 13. So now I'm going to erase all this and just put the number 13 here, right? So now I know that that's, uh, that's going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, right, and another 7. So this expression here, let's get rid of that, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 is the same as decimal 77, right? Now, a, a couple things real quick. Notice how this 1's place is set. Whenever this 1's place is set, it's always going to be an odd number. The only way to get an odd number in, in binary is to put the 1's place set. So let's do one that's not, that is not, an odd number. Real quick. So let's do this. One zero 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 one one. I'll make it real easy on myself, right? So one twenty eight. Nope, oh, sorry, I'm gonna get rid of this. Get rid of this one plus put a zero there. So one twenty eight plus two, right? Right? So this this would be the decimal equivalent equivalent of of one thirty. Okay, right? One twenty eight plus two is one thirty. And notice that this place is, is not set, and this is an even number. So again, if there's the one's place is set, it has to be an odd number, no matter what. So that's just a little thing I wanted to point out. Okay. So another thing that is important to also be able to look at is if I draw lots of, of ones here. So let's go ahead and draw a lot of ones. Right? So remember with the decimal number, we would we went with 99 and we added one more, it jumped to a thousand. Same thing here. If you have a long series of ones. It's always going to be one less than the next place thing. So obviously, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is going to be one less than the next place setting, which is 63. And again, since this is set, it has to be an odd number. So again, it, it, always look for little ways of making it easier on yourself. And one more thing I want to point out before I move on to some examples is... Uh, again, I'm going to break this up in, into two parts. So again, the largest number you can have on this, over here on this side, is 15, right? That's the largest number. 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 15. But let's look at the other side. I'm going to do a few little tricks. If you add these two place settings together, that is 192. If I add these two place settings together, right, that is uh, 96. And if I add these two place settings together, right, that is 48, right? That's 48. So a little trick there to always kind of put that in the back of your head. If you have a, these two place settings are set to ones and ones, uh, that is 192. If these two are set to one and one, then that's 96. Or if these two are set to one and one, that's 48. So a little trick on helping, you know, kind of decipher these numbers quicker and that way, you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about this so much when you see long strings of ones and zeros. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little practice real quick, and then we'll be finished with this video, and then we'll move on to the next video of decimal to binary. So let's take a look at this number, right? So we know right there, we break it in half, right? So this is 6, right? And this is 16, 
right? So 16, now we know this is gonna be an even number because of that place setting. So 16 plus six, where I come from is 22, and that's the, the number. So let's keep on going. So let's take a look at a few more. Okay, so here we go. Another, um, so now we have a couple of things here. We have um, 64 plus 16 plus eight plus four plus one. So we know this is gonna have a couple of things. One is we know this is gonna be an odd number, right? We know that on this side, we've got 12, 13. So we have 13 over here. Then all we have to do is add you know, 16 and 64 to it. So if you add 64 plus 16 plus 13, you're gonna get 93. Okay, so again, little ways to try to make it easier on yourself when you see. Now, another thing over here, notice I'm writing the leading zero. Um, again, most of the time you wouldn't need that. You know, you don't, like when if I write in decimal 47, there's no zero at the beginning, right? So we don't need the hundreds place setting being represented with a zero. But uh, the reason why we're adding these leading zeros over here is because um, when we start breaking down... Um, IP addresses. IP addresses are all in bytes. So um, it's important to remember that that place setting is sometimes important to include. Now, if I were to just write these decimal, uh, these binary numbers out by themselves, I wouldn't include the, the leading zero. But we're going to do it today just because we want to play with bytes. Okay, we want to play with bytes. Let's do another one. Okay, again, remember, breaking it in half. So if I look at this side, this is six, right? Now, of course, remember I told you if you add these together, you get, what do you get? So you get, um, so that is um, 96 plus six, which is going to be 102, right? So again, little ways to make it easy on yourself. Let's go into another one here. Again, what did I say this was? So I broke it up into two parts, right? So this one here is 90, uh, one, I'm sorry, not 90, it's 120, it's 192. 120 plus 60 was 192. Eight plus two is 10, so this has to be 202, right? So far, so good. Let's do the next one. Ah, so here we go. Strings of ones, right? What is that? So it's always one less than the next place setting. So this has to be 63, right? Let's go on to the next one. Ooh, okay, here we go. I'm sorry, here we go. So, um, so this one is an interesting number because it's we're going to add backwards. So if we add all these backwards, right? Oh, we're going to need that one. If we add all these backwards, right? This would be one, one. Uh, so let's start with uh, this from the uh, other side, right? So let's start right here. 128 plus 64 is 192. 192 plus 32 would be 224. 224 plus 16 would be 240. So adding backwards is a very important skill. At the end of the next video, we're gonna go over this with a lot more detail. And of course, boom, 240. Okay, so um, at the end of this little video, there's gonna be a little quiz, so be ready for that. So again, being able to convert binary numbers to decimal numbers um, is very important. And understanding uh, why we do it is also important. We do it because Sometimes we'll be given decimal numbers and we'll have to convert them to binary or binary numbers and convert them to decimal. Uh, again, being able to do eight bits is really important because we love bytes, right? We love bytes, especially with IP addresses. So IP addresses uh, are really the reason why we want to be able to do this. So, okay, so take the quick quiz and then watch the next video, decimal to binary conversion.